basket eating. What are you eating? What was that in your mouth? Huh? What was that in your mouth? Oh, he's such a good boy. Yes, he's a good boy. Hi, this is Gina with Resplendent Daughter Ministries. Thanks for taking the time to stop by today. I bet you wondered, where am I and what was that? Well, that was Charlie, my dog, and he is not the sharpest knife in the drawer, okay? But I introduced you to Charlie. Here he is again. Hey, Charlie. Hey. Yes, he's a good boy. Yes, he is. <laughs> I introduced you to Charlie because Charlie loves to chase things. And that is the topic of today's post. What are you chasing? Let's open in prayer. Father, thank you so much for these friends who have stopped by today. And I pray that as we look into your word that you will guide us, that you will open our eyes and our ears and our hearts to what you have for us from your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, okay, so that was kind of an unorthodox beginning, was it not? But the title of today's post is, What Are You Chasing? I always have difficulty in the Resplendent Daughter blog when I am what you might call between books. We've finished Philippians now, and I'm supposed to be going on to Colossians, but I'm just not feeling it at the moment. Maybe by tomorrow morning, I'll be feeling it a little bit more. Um, when I first started the blog, I started out just sort of blogging on important topics, at least those i believed to be the most important. And then um, after a while, I began to flounder for daily ex, uh, inspiration. And so I began the discipline of working through a book of the Bible at a time. And um, this has worked pretty well for me. I hope as you've uh, dropped by and uh, watched these vlogs or visited my blog. I hope that you've received a blessing too. It's it's worked well for me in my personal devotional time, which is really what this blog and vlog are all about anyway. But anyway, though, between books, I sort of sometimes get into a funk that's akin to eating a beautiful plate of food. I'm a one-at-a-time eater. You know, one of those freaky people that doesn't want their foods to touch, um, by and large. Um, and so I, I usually eat one food before moving on to the next. So applying that habit to Bible study, when I finish one delicious food, such as the book of Philippians, I'm faced with choosing another one to, to, to uh, ingest, spiritually, that is. Um, so I've been doing this thing in the blog recently where uh, I'm, I've been going through the Pauline letters, the letters that Paul wrote in chronological order, chronological as to when they were written, not as to how they appear in Scripture. So I'm supposed to go on to Colossians next, and uh, we'll get there soon, and, and uh, we'll satisfy our hunger there in that book. But uh, for the moment, um, there's a theme, a biblical truth that has been resonating in my spirit. And so because of that, we're going to meditate on that today. It's from Matthew 6, 33, and uh, the verse says this, But above all, pursue his kingdom and righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Okay, so the key question that Jesus is asking in these verses is, what are you seeking? That is, what are you pursuing? What drives you? What are you chasing? Charlie, whom you met a few moments ago, likes to chase doorbells or slamming doors or uh, any other sudden noise that he hears, a knock on the door. Uh, he immediately sets to barking long and loud. The hair stands up on the back of his neck and on his back, and he just gets very agitated. Those are triggers for him. What are your triggers? What are you chasing? First, um, 
how does one pursue the kingdom of God anyway? How do you pursue the kingdom of God? And if one is already a believer, how do you pursue his righteousness? I mean, don't we have his righteousness already if we're a believer? Lots of questions. Okay, so first, yes, those who believe in and trust Jesus Christ as Savior have his perfect righteousness credited to his or her account. The fancy theological word for that is imputed, imputed. Romans 4.22 is the reference here where Abraham is used as an example of eternally saving faith. If you're reading uh, my blog, this blog post, or if you're watching this vlog and you've never made that personal decision to accept and follow Jesus, your quest for righteousness begins right there. You really can't work yourself up into being more righteous. Uh, if we're honest with ourselves, we know that that is a failing proposition from the start. The only hope we have is to get our righteousness from the only righteous one, Jesus Christ. He's both the source and the end point of saving grace through faith. And so once that is settled, then believers, what does it mean to chase righteousness, to pursue it if we already possess it? Well, Proverbs 15, 9, 15, 9 says this, the Lord detests the ways of the wicked, but he loves those who pursue righteousness. Believers, this is not going to be a popular thing to say. You've been warned, okay? It's not possible to seek, pursue, or chase after the kingdom of God apart from seeking, pursuing, or chasing his righteousness in this world. Excuse me a second. My iPad is having a, a meltdown of some sort. Okay, what is going on here? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, technical difficulties. I hope the coach will forgive me. Okay, so second, um, it's not possible to seek or pursue or chase after the kingdom of God apart from doing that in this world, in this life. Truth and righteousness are the foundations on which his kingdom is built. Pursuing righteousness is extremely unpopular these days. It's often mislabeled as legalism. And admittedly, there is a fine line there between the two. But I would like to make the case to you that our country, our families, and our churches are in the messes they are in because we as Christians have laid down on the battlefield. As a whole, we no longer pursue righteousness. What we do pursue instead is love or some namby-pamby sissy form of love that is weak. True love is not weak. You know, Last night, the Hubster and I went to watch the Tarzan movie. Uh, if you've not seen the newest Tarzan movie, I recommend it. It's, it's good. But the love that Tarzan and Jane have for each other is not weak. Now, admittedly, this is a, it's, it's a fantasy type of movie, okay? I mean, there's no way that Tarzan and it could have done those things that he did in the movie. Okay, granted, it's a story. It's a story, okay? But in the movie... Uh, Jane and Tarzan's love for each other is a very fierce love, and true love is fierce. It fiercely pursues truth. It is supremely strong because it's grounded in truth and righteousness. Or an another thing we chase, is, if we don't chase love, is we chase unity, which is great. Unity is great if... It is grounded in truth and righteousness. More often, however, when people talk about unity, whether it's political party unity or unity in the church, um, sometimes it's a deceptive 
false unity that is driven by cowardice and by weakness of purpose, lack of courage, the succumbing to go along to get along attitude. By allowing the enemy small, seemingly insignificant victories, we may have lost the war in America and in our churches and in our homes. Here is an example. Shopping at Target. Okay, I told you that this was going to be step on some people's toes. I don't have to say any more, do I? Many of you who read this blog are aware of the stance this store has taken against righteousness and public decency. Now, stories are emerging of cross-dressing men going into Target restrooms and dressing rooms and making videos of women during their private moments. And if you go to my written blog, there's a link in the written blog to a story about that. I ask you to consider your response to this situation. Are you still shopping at Target? Oh, you can think of many reasons why it's okay to shop there, even if there are other alternatives. Spare me. The only real question is, are you going to take a stand or not? This is just one example, and you may think it's a ridiculous one. I submit to you that it is not. Rather, it is highly illustrative. If we think it's ridiculous, perhaps it's because we have laid down in the battle one time too many. Christians have, in most cases, lost their will to battle for truth and righteousness. Instead, we seek after all these things that are mentioned in our key verse today. But regardless of what they are, and most of them are good things, be assured of this, believer, what you chase is what you will catch. We've got it backward, according to God's word. Notice how our verse begins. Above all, above all, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. Let's pray. Father, I need, we need some honest self-examination in light of your word today. In response, may we have your truth and your righteousness, the foundations of your kingdom in the forefront of our minds at all times, even when it is unpopular, even when we find ourselves standing in the minority, as Christians will increasingly be in this seductive modern culture. May your righteousness be what we chase after as we desire to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm out of time today, but my blog address is on the screen. My Twitter handle is on the screen. Subscribe to this YouTube channel if this post has blessed you, and you'll find more of my vlogs here at the Empower channel, along with many others from other great vloggers. Thanks again for visiting today.